As the nation fights the COVID-19 pandemic, we begin with the message of precaution to stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps. Wear a face mask. Maintain dogas ki duri for social distancing. Focus on hand and face hygiene. Now the news. Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I'm Punita Bakshi. And with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lauds the role of National Cadet Corps in the service of nation. Prime Minister to address the World Economic Forum's Davos Dialogue this evening. Budget session of Parliament to begin tomorrow. First budget in the history to be in paperless form. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar says face-off events in eastern Ladakh disturb relationship between India and China. Country's COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 96.94% and consignments of Made in India COVID Shield vaccines reach Sri Lanka. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has lauded the role of National Cadet Corps in the service of the nation, adding that from floods to any other natural disasters, the cadets have helped the people during such calamities. Addressing the NCC rally in New Delhi today, he said, during the COVID-19 period, lakhs of cadets worked with the administration and society across the country. Mr. Modi said, the country has seen effective results of people taking their responsibilities during COVID and India fought the pandemic well due to their efforts. जब देश के लोग एकजुट हुए अपना दायित्व निभाया तो देश कोरोना का अच्छी तरह मुकाबला भी कर पाया साथियों ये कालखंड चुनौतीपूर्ण तो रहा पर ये अपने साथ अवसर भी लाया अवसर चुनौतियों से निपटने का विजयी बनने का अवसर देश के लिए कुछ कर गुजरने का अवसर देश की क्षमताएं बढ़ाने का अवसर आत्मनिर्भर बनने का अवसर साधारण से असाधारण और साधारण से सर्वश्रेष्ठ बनने का मिस्टर मोदी सेड अराउंड 1 लाख एनसीसी कैडेट्स आर बीइंग ट्रेन बाय आर्मी नेवी एंड एयर फोर्स फॉर अ न्यू रिस्पांसिबिलिटी इन नियरली 175 डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स इन द कोस्टल एंड बॉर्डर एरियाज ऑफ द कंट्री द गवर्नमेंट हैज मेड एफर्ट्स टू सी दैट द रोल ऑफ एनसीसी कैडेट्स इज फर्दर एक्सपेंडेड he said, with a view to strengthen the security network in the border and coastal areas, the participation of NCC is being boosted. Mr. Modi said, the government has increased the number of firing simulators from 1 to nearly 100, microlight flight simulators from 5 to 48, and rowing simulators have been increased from 11 to 60. He added that these modern simulators will improve the training qualities of NCC. He said NCC has seen a 35% increase in the number of girl cadets and every front of country's defence forces are being opened for females. He said India's strong daughters are ready to battle it out against the enemies and India needs their bravery. The uniform youth organization in the group of NCC has made their own children in और मजबूत होती जा रही है और जब मैं आपके प्रयास देखता हूं तो मुझे बहुत खुशी मिलती है आप पर भरोसा और मजबूत होता है और सेवा भाव भारतीय परंपरा को जहां बढ़ाया जा रहा है वहां एनसीसी कैडेट नजर आता है जहां संविधान के प्रति लोगों में जागरूकता पैदा करने का अभियान चल रहा है वहां भी एनसीसी कैडेट्स दिखते हैं द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड द कंट्री हैज रिसीव्ड थ्री मोर राफाल फाइटर जेट्स फ्रॉम फ्रांस एंड दे हैव द एबिलिटी टू रिफ्यूल मिड एयर 
which has been done by India's friend UAE, helped by Greece and Saudi Arabia. Mr. Modi said this is a portrayal of India's strengthening friendship with Middle East countries. कल ही भारत में फ्रांस से तीन और रफाइल फाइटर प्लेन आए हैं भारत के इन फाइटर प्लेन ही मिड एयर ही रिफ्यूलिंग हुई है तो ये रिफ्यूलिंग भारत के मित्र यूनाइटेड अरब अमीरात ने की है और इसमें ग्रीस और सऊदी अरब ने सहयोग किया है ये भारत के खाड़ी देशों के साथ मजबूत होते संबंधों की एक तस्वीर भी है The Prime Minister further said that India will soon be known as a producer of defence equipment instead of being a market as it is today. So se jyada suraksha se jude samano ki videshon se khareed ko band kar unko Bharat mein hi taiyar kiya ja raha hai. Ab Bharat ka apna Tejas fighter hamara Tejas fighter plane samandar se lekar aasman tak apna tej chala raha hai. Hal mein vayu sena ke liye 80 se jyada Tejas ka order bhi diya gaya hai. इतना ही नहीं आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस आधारित वॉरफेयर में भी भारत किसी से पीछे ना रहे इसके लिए हर जरूरी आर एंड डी पर फोकस किया जा रहा है वो दिन दूर नहीं जब भारत डिफेंस इक्विपमेंट के बड़े मार्केट के बजाय एक बड़े प्रोड्यूसर के रूप में जाना जाएगा Earlier, the Prime Minister inspected the Guard of Honor and reviewed the march past by the various NCC contingents. Along with the cultural performance, NCC cadets also presented before the Prime Minister their capabilities in various fields. Mr. Modi also distributed awards to the meritorious NCC cadets. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh was also present on the occasion. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address the World Economic Forum's Davos Dialogue this evening through video conferencing. More than 400 top industry leaders from across the globe will attend the session wherein the prime minister will be speaking on the fourth industrial revolution using technology for the good of humanity. Mr Modi will also interact with the CEOs during the event. In a tweet Mr Modi said he is looking forward to speaking on a wide range of subjects relating to India's reform trajectory, increased usage of technology and other issues. The Davos Dialogues agenda marks the launch of the World Economic Forum's Great Reset Initiative in the post-COVID world. Union Budget 2021-22, which will be presented on the 1st of February, will be the first budget in the history of India in the people's form. Finance Minister Dinmar Sitaraman has also launched a mobile application named Union Budget Mobile App for hassle-free access of budget documents by members of Parliament and the general public using the simplest form of digital convenience. The mobile app facilitates complete access to 14 new and budget documents including the annual financial statement commonly known as a budget demand for grants and finance bill. The app has a user friendly interface with embedded features of downloading, printing, search, zoom, in and out, table of contents and external links. It is bilingual English and Hindi and will be available on both Android and iOS platforms. The app can also be downloaded from the Union Budget web portal www.indiabudget.gov.in. The app has been developed by the National Informatics Center (NIC). The budget documents will be available on the mobile app after the completion of the budget speech by the Finance Minister in Parliament on the 1st of February. Union Home Minister Amit Shah is keeping a close watch on the situation arising out of violence erupted during farmers' protests in the national capital. An action has been taken in this regard. Official sources said Delhi police will also issue lookout notice against the farmers' leaders. The process will also start to ask the farmers' leaders to surrender their passport. Meanwhile, the Home Minister visited Shushrut Trauma Center and Tirath Ram Hospital in civil line areas in North Delhi today and met the injured police personnel. Many police personnel who were injured with the 26th January tractor rally of the protesting farmers are undergoing treatment in these hospitals. Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Javdekar has once again urged the farmers, especially from Punjab, to have trust in the elected government and Prime Minister Narendra Modi rather than some fringe elements. Citing International Monetary Fund Chief Geeta Gopinath's article on Twitter, Mr. Javdekar said that she has underlined the potential of India's new agricultural laws in raising farm income. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar today said that the face-off events in eastern Ladakh last year have profoundly disturbed India's relationship with China. 
He said the incident at LAC not only signaled disregard for commitments on minimizing troops, but also showed willingness to breach peace and tranquility. Delivering the keynote address at the 13th All India Conference of China Studies through video conferencing, the minister said, with all the differences and disagreements on boundary issue with China, the border areas still remained fundamentally peaceful. The last loss of life at the Indo-China border before 2020 was way back in 1975. He said that is why the events in eastern Ladakh last year have profoundly disturbed the relationship. He added that India is yet to receive a credible explanation for the change in Chinese stance and reasons for amassing of troops at LAC. Dr. Jay Shankar said, far from mitigating differences, events of 2020 have actually put the ties between the two countries under exceptional stress. He also said, development of ties can only be based on mutuality, like mutual respect, mutual sensitivity and mutual interest. He underlined that any expectation that situation at the border can be brushed aside and life can carry on undisturbed is not realistic. For all the differences and disagreements that we may have had on the boundary, the central fact was that border areas still remain fundamentally peaceful. The last loss of life before 2020 was, in fact, as far back as 1975. That is why the events in eastern Ladakh last year have so profoundly disturbed the relationship. Because they not only signaled a disregard for commitments about minimizing troop levels, but also showed a willingness to breach peace and tranquility. I don't really have to remind you what impact this has had on both public and political opinion in our country. Significantly, to date, we have yet to receive a credible explanation for the change in China's stance. In Maharashtra, Chief Minister Udav Thakle formally launched the agriculture pump power connection policy. Speaking on this occasion last evening in Mumbai, he said, the state government has taken bold steps to make a radical change in the lives of farmers through the policy of agricultural pump power connection. The Chief Minister also inaugurated Krishi Urja Abhiyan policy web portal, Solar Energy Land Bank portal, Maha Krishi Abhiyan app, and ACF app prepared by the power discom Maha Vitaran. He said that the main demands of the farmers, including providing electricity during daytime and MSP for the agricultural production, is government's priority, and the state government has been taking various decisions in favor of the farmers. Chief Minister said that after the wave of the farmers' loans, the government has decided to provide immediate electricity connection to farmers to the Krishi Pump Electricity Connection Policy and relief in interest on electricity bill, arrears and relief in delayed charges. He urged the farmers to clear the long pending dues as the government has been extending cooperation. Deputy Chief Minister Ajit Pawar, Energy Minister Dr. Nitin Raut and Revenue Minister Balasat Thorat were also present on the occasion. In Rajasthan, voting is underway for the election of councillors and 90 urban local bodies spread in 20 districts. The polling started at 8 a.m. in Ajmer Municipal Corporation along with 9 municipal councils and 80 municipalities. More from a correspondent. Voting remains slow in the morning hours due to cold, but it has gained momentum in the afternoon. In view of the corona pandemic, elaborate arrangements have been made by the state election department at polling stations. 9,930 candidates are in three, four, three thousand. 35 wards of urban bodies. 60 municipal bodies currently have a BJP board. The challenge is for the BJP is to save all its boards. At the same time, the ruling Congress is trying to save its credibility by performing better in these elections. Jitendra Divedi, AIR News, Jaipur. In Tamil Nadu, Chief Minister Edapi Palanasamy today inaugurated Veda Nilayam, the residence of late Chief Minister Jaya Lalita, situated at Poe Garden, Chennai. As the place is contended by Jaya Lalita's niece and nephew as rightful heirs, the Madras High Court passed an interim order saying that it should not be thrown open to the public till further orders. State Ministers, Assembly Speaker, Members of Parliament and Assembly attended the function. The Chief Minister also unveiled a nine-feet bronze statue of Jayalalitha and renamed the Tamil Nadu Higher Education Campus after Jayalalitha. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has paid tributes to Lala Lajpat Rai on the occasion of his birth anniversary today. 
He said the contribution of great freedom fighter Lala Lajpat Rai in India's freedom struggle is indelible and will continue to inspire people across generations. Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Javdekar and other cabinet ministers also paid tributes to the legendary freedom fighter. In Jammu and Kashmir, Krishan Dev Sethi, the last surviving member of the JNK Constituent Assembly, passed away at his Jammu residence this morning. The 93-year-old Sethi was a member of the Constituent Assembly, which framed the constitution of erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir. He also represented Norshar Assembly segment of Jammu and Kashmir. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio, a reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lauds the role of National Cadet Corps in the service of the nation. Prime Minister to address the World Economic Forum's Davos Dialogue this evening. Budget session of Parliament to begin tomorrow, first budget in the history to be in paperless form. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jayashankar says face of events in Eastern Ladakh disturbed relationship between India and China. Country's COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 96.94% and consignments of Made in India Covishield vaccines reach Sri Lanka. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The consignments of Made in India COVID vaccines dispatched by India have reached Sri Lanka. In a tweet, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar termed Sri Lanka as a dependable partner and reliable friend. This gift of COVID-19 vaccines to Sri Lanka is a part of India's Vaccine Maitri Initiative, under which India has gifted vaccines to seven other countries in the region. This humanitarian gesture amid the pandemic showcases India's commitment to its neighbourhood first policy and Sagar doctrine in which Sri Lanka has a prominent position. The delivery of the COVID-19 vaccines to Sri Lanka is a fulfilment of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's commitment made to his Sri Lankan counterpart Mahinda Rajapaksha during the virtual bilateral summit held in September last year for all possible support to Sri Lanka for minimizing the health and economic impact of the pandemic. India has also dispatched consignments of Made in India COVID vaccines to Bahrain. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar has said that India provided medical supplies and equipment to more than 150 nations during the COVID-19 pandemic. Addressing the 13th Annual Conference of Institute for National Security Studies, Israel, he said, even as India began mass vaccination at home, supply of Indian vaccine to our immediate neighbours started. Dr. Jay Shankar said this is expected to cover other partner countries in the coming days. A total of over 23,55,000 people have been administered COVID-19 vaccines in the country so far. Nearly 3,25,000 people were vaccinated to the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, the country's COVID-19 recovery rate reached 96.94%, with a total recovery of more than 14,000 patients in the last 24 hours. The health ministry said that more than 1 crore 3,73,000 patients have already recovered from this disease. The number of COVID-19 active cases is on a continuously declining trajectory in the country. Health and Family Welfare Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan chaired the 23rd meeting of the high-level group of ministers on COVID-19 by video conference today. He said that less than 12,000 cases were reported in the last 24 hours and the active caseload has reduced to just 1.73 lakhs. Our recovery rate is almost touching 97% today morning. To be precise, it is 96.93%. And our fatality rate continues to be the lowest in the whole world, so almost 1.44%. Last 24 hours, we had 11,660 cases in the whole country. Dr. Harshwadhan said India has supported other countries with supply of COVID-19 vaccine during such global public health crisis and trained the personnel of several countries in vaccine administration. 
He added that, that by being a mitra to the global community, India has earned global trust by supplying indigenously made vaccines at this crucial hour. We all know that we were privileged to have been given two indigenous vaccines by our scientists and they are already being given to our people in the country and right now to begin with starting with health workers and then of course the frontline workers. Till today morning, in fact yesterday evening, we have completed 42,674 sessions of vaccination all over the country. Minister of External Affairs Dr. S. Jay Shankar, Civil Aviation Minister Hardeep Puri, Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare Ashwini Kumar, Minister of State for Home Affairs Nityananda Rai, and Minister of State for Ports, Shipping and Waterways Mansuk Mandavia also participated in the meeting. In Bihar, COVID-19 recovery rate has improved to 98.80%. The number of active cases in the state is continuously declining. Currently, 1,613 patients are undergoing treatment at various hospitals. Only 86 positive cases were reported across the state during the past 24 hours. No positive case was reported from 19 districts. 2,57,122 patients have recovered from the infection in the state so far. Over 2 crore 7 lakh corona tests have been conducted so far. In Jharkhand, 24,020 people have been inoculated with COVID-19 vaccine in the first phase of the ongoing COVID vaccination drive. People have been turning up at the COVID vaccination centres after almost a week of the beginning of the vaccination programme. A report. After an appeal made by the state government to ensure maximum participation in the COVID vaccination drive by the Governor and Chief Minister of Jharkhand on this Republic Day, there is an absurd scene in people's participation for taking COVID-19 vaccines. While no side effect has been reported from any part of the state, the figures continue to rise to more than 24,000. The achievement percentage has also increased to more than 50%. On the other side, the number of active COVID-19 cases is also on decline, with a mere 723 active cases remaining yet to be recovered in Jharkhand. The state health department has achieved a recovery rate of 98.49%. Shilpi AIR News, Ranchi. In Telangana, over 1,30,000 health workers have been vaccinated in the ongoing COVID vaccination so far. The vaccination for health workers and staff in private sector in the state is continuing across the state. According to the state public health director, Dr. Srinivas Rao, no case of severe health issues reported after vaccination so far. In Madhya Pradesh, more than 2,47,000 patients have recovered from COVID-19 infection so far, with recovery of 345 patients yesterday. More from a Bhopal correspondent. In Madhya Pradesh, 185 new positive cases were reported yesterday. COVID positivity rate is consistently declining in the state and stands at 1.1% for second consecutive day. 22 districts recorded no positive cases yesterday, with six patients succumbing to the infection. The death toll rose to 3,799. Meanwhile, over 64,000 people were vaccinated on Wednesday across the state. Highest number of vaccination was done in Saga district, which stood highest in achieving the target vaccination with 81%. Pooja P. Vardhan, AIR News, Bhopal. In Gujarat, 95,909 people have been vaccinated so far during the COVID-19 vaccination drive, which began from the 16th of January. According to the State Health Department, 3,787 people, most of them healthcare workers, were vaccinated yesterday. Our correspondent reports that the side effect of COVID-19 vaccine is almost negligible. More in this report. Gujarat will cross 1 lakh mark of total vaccination today, which will be the one-fourth of the target of the first phase. Though the rate of vaccination in the state is moderate, many doctors are showing enthusiasm for taking COVID-19 vaccine. State Vaccination Officer Dr. Nayanjani has said that there is no significant report of side effects of COVID-19 vaccine till now. Director of Indian Institute of Public Health, Gandhinagar, IIPH, Professor Dilip Maulankar said that every vaccination program has some side effect, but the side effect of COVID-19 vaccine are negligible. Addressing a webinar yesterday, he said that all should get vaccinated without any apprehension. 
and Ahmedabad based pathologist Dr. Mukesh Maheshwari said that both the vaccines have undergone necessary scrutiny. He said that it is the only weapon against COVID-19 to ensure herd immunity. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. Most of the schools in Maharashtra have been running online due to the corona outbreak since last few months have started from yesterday. The children were given entry in their respective schools only after checking their temperature, sanitizing their hands and making sure that they were wearing masks. School Education Minister Varsha Gaikwad visited some schools in Pune district and interacted with the students. More from our Mumbai correspondent. In Maharashtra, all schools for class 5 to 8 have resumed since yesterday. Students from almost all the districts including Pune, Nashik, Gundia, Parbhani, Sindhudurg, Ahmadnagar and Dhule remain present in their schools enthusiastically. Some schools in Nashik welcomed their students with attractive decorations and rangolis. In Vashim, students were welcomed with a bouquet of flowers. Government and private schools in Gondia district started in the presence of 50% students. Schools in all the districts have permitted students to attend their classes only after obtaining consent from their parents. Madhuri Pange, AIR News, Mumbai. In Jammu and Kashmir, the classes in degree colleges will resume from the 1st of February. The winter vacation for colleges in summer zones of Jammu will end on the 31st of January, while as the winter vacation for degree colleges in Kashmir and winter zones of Jammu on the 14th of February. The classes will be held while adhering to all COVID-19 SOPs already issued by the government. The Higher Education Department will ensure sanitization of college premises and other precautionary measures. The colleges will open for the first time for normal classes after almost a year. News has an essential place reserved in the daily lives of the people. This is most significant with the rural population in the country. And for accessing the news, they prefer news on All India Radio. A small village, Kurnur, in Akalkot Tehsil of Solapur district of Maharashtra, bears testimony in this regard. More from a correspondent. Amid the chaos and cacophony of phony channels, reliable and useful news is what matters for the rural listeners. Radio speaks to them, that too, in a conversational style, may it be the news. And this clicks more for them than any other source of information. And for this, they will go to the extent of installing loudspeakers on high-rise temples to share the news live to the villagers in the surroundings. The villagers of Kurnur in Akalkot Tehsil of Solapur district, a settlement of around 6,000 residents, have installed speakers on Lord Datta Mandir and the priest Dhondiba Dhumale tunes in regional Marathi news bulletin of AIR Pune. The villagers listen to the news while engaged in their preparations for the day ahead. The activity is going on for last two years and the villagers feel they are getting the real news they need. The temple speakers also provide important national messages, speeches of Prime Minister and other relevant important programs. Manoj Kshirsagar, AIR News, Pune. The budget session of Parliament is beginning from tomorrow on the eve of the session. Today, News Services Division of All India Radio will bring to you special discussion programs, Issues Before Parliament and Sansad K. Samaksh Mudde. Issues Before Parliament program can be heard on FM Gold Channel from 7.20 p.m. to 7.40 p.m., while Sansad K. Samaksh Mudde can be heard on FM Gold Channel from 9.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. Benchmark domestic stocks today plunged more than 1% in inter-day trade. The Sensex and the Nifty logged losses amid negative global queues. The BSE Sensex was trading below 47,000 mark, while the NSE Nifty was below 13,800 level. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for the day. In the national capital Delhi, haze was witnessed in the morning. The minimum temperature was 6 degrees Celsius and maximum will be around 20 degrees. Mumbai will have mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature was 15 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 29 degrees. Chennai will have partly cloudy sky, the minimum temperature is 24 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 31 degrees. Kolkata is likely to witness mainly clear sky. In the day, the minimum temperature is 12 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 23 degrees. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi lords the role of National Cadet Corps in the service of nation. Prime Minister to address the World Economic Forum's Davos Dialogue this evening. Budget session of Parliament to begin tomorrow. First budget in the history to be uh, in paperless form. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar says face-off events in eastern Ladakh disturb relationship between India and China. 
Country's COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 96.94% and consignments of Made in India Covishield vaccines reach Sri Lanka. And with that we end the Midday News.